Okay, so we've covered both the server side and the client side coding within the framework. Um, now I want to talk about the communication between the two. Again, in traditional programming on Roblox Studio, you have to create a bunch of remote events and remote functions to do this. The framework deals with this for you in a really simple way. So we're going to go to the server side code and we, we created a test service. So we're going to go to that. And this is where this client object comes into place, into play rather. So again, it's just a table within our, our code here, but we can actually put events onto this table, which will automatically do all the heavy lifting for us and create the remote events and everything. So we're gonna do that. Again, this is server side code that we're working with right now. So I'm gonna say function test service dot client, and then a method, um, hello, <laughs> very simple. Now, again, this is code that's going to run on the server side, but the client has access to it. That's important. I'm not writing a client side method. I'm writing a server side method that is exposed to the client that's running on the server. So I'm going to say, hello. <laughs> and automatically, um, the first parameter is always the player. So we can actually say, hello, player.name. Um, and then we can return something to the client too. So when we say hello, we're going to return back 32. Why not? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so when we run the game, of course, nothing happens. But if we go to our explorer, um, we can actually look at the internals of this. And we'll actually see that there's a hello remote function automatically created, which is pretty cool. Now, how do we call this? So again, um, this is our server code, but let's go to the client code back to our camera. Again, it doesn't actually do anything with the camera, but whatever. Uh, get rid of this code. Let's say we want to call this hello method. We can do this really easily. So first we have to reference it. So our test service is self.services.test service. And now we can actually invoke that. So remember, we were returning that number. So num equals test service hello. That's it. Just test service hello. That simple. And print the server returned num. So we're also going to get rid of all of this junk right here so we don't spam our output with other things. So again, what we did there, we created, um, we exposed a method to the client called hello from the test service. And from our client code, we called it. So let's try it. When I run the code, well, it's not going to do anything because I didn't start a client. Stupid me. So if I press F6, I'll create a client actually. And there we go. We see that the server said hello, crazyman32. And our client said the server returned 32. So it worked just as we expected. That simple. Again, you never had to touch any sort of uh, remote event or remote functions or anything. All you had to do is write test service that client hello. Now we can also pass things to it. So let's say we want to create, uh, we want to multiply two numbers. So let's change this to you know, multiply n1 and n2. So all we have to do, return n1 times n2. That simple. So from our camera script again, we can say the, um, what is it called when you multiply a number? It's the, the something. That doesn't matter. Let's call it num again. Test service, multiply two and four. Print two times four equals no. Start our client. And just like that, oh my God, just like that, two times four equals eight. So it worked. Great. Of course, never do that. That'd be so pointless to multiply things on the server side for the client. That's, of course, you never do that. But for the sake of an example, there you go. All right. 
So last but not least is the event side. Again, events are so important within game programming. You can create events for the client to, or the between the client and the server. So remember from our services, we had register event. We also have self register client event. So let's say we want to use the same one event start game. You know, no, I don't want to do that because that is not good. We're going to say event um, ping because we're going to ping it every one second or something. So we're going to register a client event called ping. Um, that's it. That's all you have to do for that. Again, that's going to, behind the scenes, create the remote event for us and everything. Now back to our camera, all we have to do is connect to it. So test service dot ping connect. So just like a standard event on Roblox. And we can say um, the server has pinged. <laughs> Something weird like that. And we'll output the time too. Now within our code, in order to fire that event, all I had to do is self fire client event event ping. Now in this instance, it's a client event. So um, when you're firing a client event, you have to specify, is it a specific client that you're trying to fire? So there could be multiple clients in your game, and multiple players. So maybe you only want to tell, or maybe you only want to fire the event for one player. In that case, you would use fire client event, designate the player, and then any, any events that you want. In our um, instance, that we want to ping all the players. So we're going to say fire all clients event just ping event so just like that so that should just happen once but we want to have it happen like every second so we're just gonna do that so every one second it's gonna fire that event so start the client and there you go You'll see in the output, it's continuously printing out these things. So again, if we go look at the internals under the hood, we will see that our test service has a ping remote event here. Again, you never have to touch any of this stuff. I just want to show where it is. And yeah, that's that. So similarly, again, you can send um, information. So we're just going to kind of send a random number and we can connect that here. So instead of printing out tick, we can print out our random number. And just like that, it's working. All right, so that's how that works. Now, I actually explicitly did not implement a way to allow the server to invoke functions or events on the client side. I've always considered that to be bad practice from how I've learned how to program over the years. So the framework does not allow you to do that. And quite frankly, I've never ran into a, a scenario where I had to do that within programming. Um, if you're familiar with web programming, then you would, you would understand this concept really well. Um, so yeah, that should, uh, that should do it as far as I'm aware with this framework. Next video, I'll cover the shared modules really quickly too.